Hi there, this is Mo Volans for Tuts Plus, and in this quick tutorial, we're going to be looking at envelope followers and envelope based modulators when filtering audio. So, I'm using the auto filter from Logic Pro 10, and this filter is a prime example of an effects unit or effects processor that has both of those uh, qualities. It, it can be an envelope modulator and an envelope follower. So, I'm going to show you the difference between the two. So, basically, we've got a bit of a drum loop, synth loop going on in the background got a bass line and a synth in it and stuff um, and uh, this is basically what we've got to set up we've got a fat mode uh, low pass which basically means that if I add resonance we don't lose any volume if I take the fat mode off we lose a lot of volume with the resonance in anyway so let's put the fat mode back in and let's start to look at the envelope uh, modulator. So if we've got the threshold about halfway, this is gonna pick up on the peaks, which is gonna become apparent in a second why we're doing that. But if we put some attack in, and then put the cutoff mod in, you're not gonna hear anything until I restart it. Should hear that filter in. but it's only gonna do it once, okay? So it's sort of useful. You can have it, it's like a fade in. The resonance will help exaggerate that. But really what we want it to do is we want it to be linked to the stuff that's in the audio signal. Because what's gonna happen with this is every time you press start, it's going to do that and then you know you can change the decay level and it might be all right for single drum hits that are triggering every time but with in this case we've got audio that's continuing past the point of the envelope so what we want to use is the dynamic control here and i'm going to put everything back down apart from sustain and we're going to use this dynamic control to induce some envelope following now that sounds wholly different, and that's because it's clamping down on the transients within the loop. And let's have a look at those. And in fact, I'm going to loop just a single part of the loop so you can see exactly what's happening. So it's clamping down on each of these transient events. We can change the threshold. So it's just clamping down on the top. Let's add a bit of distortion. So you can get some really interesting effects. And this is all through the use of this dynamic control. And realistically, it's an envelope follower. That's how an envelope follower works. It follows the envelope of your audio and it applies modulation based upon that information, as opposed to just applying the information from an envelope, an ADSR envelope, which is useful in some conditions, in conditions maybe where you're using a one-shot sample, but not when you're using a sustained loop like this. So if you want to link your filters to your audio without laborious input of lots of automation, this is probably the best way to do it. Find a, a, a filter plugin with an envelope follower on it and uh, link it to the, uh, the information in your loops. I find it really useful. Fill it right down and you can get some really cool acid effects. So there you go, envelope followers and the difference between envelope followers and envelope modulation. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.